My name is Amy Campbell, and I'm going to be sharing with you, get my screen going here for you. I am happy that you are with us today. I want you to know that I am flying solo on this, and so being able to run things and check the chat box, not going to be as well skilled with that for today. Whereas a lot of our information um, fairs are very conversational, this one is more of me being able to provide you information. And um, certainly feel free to put things in the chat if we are able to get to it. I will certainly be looking and showing. Thank you, captioner. We have closed captioning and that streaming link is now provided in the chat box. So I'm so glad that you stopped in to be with us today and to learn about buzzing into the APHS new e-learning service. So to get us going, the bumblebee is absolutely an amazing creature. And I just want you to know that in case you're wondering, I do not have a fly on me. It is actually a bumblebee. So no fly jokes allowed here. It's all about bumblebees. And I think that the bumblebee is absolutely an amazing creature. Did you know that long ago, scientists studied their bodies and movement and determined that the bumblebee actually contradicts known law of aerodynamics? You see, aerodynamically, the bee shouldn't be able to fly. Its body is too big. Its wings are too small, and yet, interestingly enough, the bumblebee doesn't know, and so the bumblebee just flies anyway. Did you know that a single bee will produce only about one and a half teaspoons of honey in a lifetime? Did you know that the cells, shaped like hexagons, form a honeycomb that can be found in a hive and is used to store pollen, Honey, and I think this is amazing, also serve as a nursery for baby bees. Bees are very busy creatures. And like so is APH's newest hub for educators and families to fly in and visit in order to deposit and withdraw honey. And the honey that I'm talking about isn't necessarily honey on home as it's on the slide as it is educational resources that are gonna help equip you in your work. Also in time, this APH Hive is going to be a place for vital mentorship for you to fly into and receive and also have colleague collaboration. That isn't quite here yet, but it is a part in of what will be coming within the next few years. A year ago at annual meeting, you heard about APH wanting to build an accessible learning management um, system. And I'm so proud to say that we reached this goal, even though progress was dramatically slowed because of COVID. So like the bumblebee taking flight, we beat the odds and I'm so excited about it. Uh, the bee's knees, personally, I think that the APH hive is the bee's knees because it offers free professional development. It's grouped currently into four categories of topics, which are all broken down into bite-sized pieces. And the reason why I love that is because it accommodates busy educators like yourself. There's opportunities to apply what was learned through completion of a follow-up activity. And what's pretty awesome is you have access to free ACB REP credit. So now it's our turn to buzz our way into the hive. And we can do that by heading over to www.aphhive.org. I gotta get some things arranged here for just a moment. So I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. I'm going to switch over into the internet so that I can take you in and you can fly into 
see hi i'm taking for a moment just to be checking chat box i'm flying solo i don't want to miss your voice I'm trying to multitask so it looks like we are still great okay i'm going to take you into the hive now i'm going to share my screen make sure i have sound and i didn't have the page quite prepped so let me get you to where we need to be when we fly into when you buzz into the hive this is where you, this is where you land um, what you see is our logo it's a hexagon shape of a honeycomb with b stripes symbol that's sandwiched in between the words aph hive buzzing around um, the hexagon shape are some hovering bees it's here on this page at when you type in www.aphhive.org that you come to our welcome page there's a welcome message plus a way to access the course catalog now if you are very detail oriented and you might have noticed that the address in my window right now is on a preview site and that is just because I need to be in a preview site in order to showcase the things I want you to see in certain steps of the process. So that is not something that you would see as a preview. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on into the catalog. Currently right now, this is the way it looks. We have four categories. We have assessment, early childhood, core curriculum, and expanded core curriculum. Each of these categories is aligned with an icon. We're gonna go into assessment first. I'm gonna click inside of it. Currently, there is only one course that's uploaded at this time, and this just plainly reflects where we are at with COVID and how it slowed things down. There's one course that's loaded right now. It's called Evaluating Independent Living Skills Using the Functional Skills Assessment. And this is an example of a course that's loaded that's based on an APH product. It's based on the functional skills assessment. It goes into this product, it showcases it, features how to use it, and even um, shares information of a program in the state of Missouri that's actually implementing it. So this is an example of what you would see right now in assessment. This course is worth one ACV REP credit, which means it's predicted that it'll take one hour in order to watch the video content that goes with it and complete an activity and do the assessment, which we'll get to in just a moment too. The next one we have, the category is uh, early childhood. This is a set of courses that are related to the development and learning needs of children from birth to age five. What you see here is there are two courses that are uploaded. We have one called Creating Learning Environments with Items in the Home. This particular course, which is worth 1.5 ACV REP credit, is a course that reflects uh, not necessarily APH product, but a valued instructor, educator, that is sharing her craft knowledge of how she provides instructional services to children, especially uh, with pre-Braille type activities. Now, whereas the second course that's in early childhood is called Reinforcing Early Braille Literacy Skills. And this particular course, which I'll let you go in and view really quickly, has two video components one that is based on the braille buzz which is a product that we provide and then the second one is really sharing that craft knowledge of how to embed activities that reinforce that early braille literacy skills so you can kind of see that there's a bit of a mixture when you go into some of our courses sometimes it's totally based on a product Sometimes it's craft knowledge, sometimes it's a little bit of both. Next, we're going into the category of core curriculum. And core curriculum is broken down into seven subcategories. We have English language arts, 
mathematics, we have science and health, social studies, fine arts, physical education, and career technical education. So in here, what you might notice, this particular category is not very filled in the hive. We have a course that is offered for English language arts now, which is the Lego Braille Bricks that falls within that category. We also have the course Tactile Aids for Mathematics. This is a really neat course. It's worth 2.5 five ACV or AP credit, and it's showcasing lots of different tools that APH offers in the catalog, shows you how to use them and how to embed those things with instructional activities. Scrolling down to the bottom, we do have a course here under special education. It's called All for One and One for All, Coaching an Inclusive Team. And in this particular course, there's information on how to have inclusive basketball, cross country, inclusion of swimming, and inclusion track, just to give you an idea of what some of that content is. So that is what we have for core curriculum at this particular point in time. The last category that we have is the expanded core curriculum that is broken down into nine subcategories and we have compensatory access, we have sensory efficiency, assistive technology, orientation and mobility, independent living, social interaction, recreation and leisure, career education and self-determination. Now one thing you may have noticed um, when going into this page, this particular page you will start to see overlap. Under compensatory access, we have three courses that are embedded in within that right now. We have that course, creating early, uh, creating learning environments with items in the home. Remember we saw that over in early childhood. We saw the Lego Braille bricks embedded in the English language subcategory. And we also have the course reinforcing early Braille literacy skills under the early childhood. This shows and demonstrates how a single course can fall into more than one category, subcategories within the APH Hive. Now, what might look a little wonky right now is under sensory efficiency and assistive technology, which are back-to-back subcategories, you see the same course together, um, one after another. It looks a little wonky. It's called magnification for students on the go. The only reason why it looks wonky right now is because we need to add more courses into the hive to fill up. So while you see things like this that are back to back and it looks a little weird, it won't always be that way, especially once things really fill up. So, um, and also in scrolling down under independent living, you may notice that the course we talked about with um, assessment is also embedded within here. So just to give you an idea, I think that now what I would really like to do is let us go in and enter a course. Each course has those bite-sized pieces. And one of the ones that I'm the most excited about is the course, the Lego Braille Bricks, play-based teaching method. And I'm going to go in and click inside to view the course. This, once you click and view the course, it takes you to our module page. And as you can see, there are several modules on here. When we use the word module, it's referring to objectives. It's also referring to any of the video content that you'll be able to view. And I'm scrolling to the bottom and it also a module example is a resource. One thing that you will notice when you're in the modules, everything has been very sequentially built with a lot of intention. Modules must be completed in an order in which it, in which it shows. The only exception to that is the resources. At the very bottom of the modules page, resources are always available for you to have access to. 
because these resources are going to help you take the course to give extra information. So what I really like about this Lego class specific course specifically is that I think that this really helps you EOTs. We're launching those Lego Braille bricks. Back in August, we hosted a week long of webinars. And if you put together those five webinars, it was between six and seven hours of content. I spent a lot of time delving into each of these webinars. I spliced, I diced, I put the Jenga puzzle together, maybe slightly different to, to put it in a storyboard kind of format that was very sequential with no redundancy. So I'm gonna take you into that now so that you can have a peek of that. And the reason why that is also helpful is that that original content that is on our YouTube page for those five webinars from August, like I said, six or seven hours of content, this particular course is now made into no more than four hours of completion. So it's been tailored down, it's been trimmed, and it's just been done intentionally to help that learning process. Every single course begins with the, the module of the objectives so that you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. What I'm gonna do is I wanna give you an idea of some of the video content and what it looks like. So the very first module of the actual content that we're looking at is called Introduction to Lego Braille Bricks. And I'm gonna play this for you now so that you can see. For blind people, Braille is literacy. The only other real option for someone who's got no sight is to listen. And by listening, you lose a lot of spelling, grammar, punctuation. I started learning Braille when I was five. It empowers me and enables me to do things that I would have never been able to do before. What we are doing here today is showing the potential of Lego Braille bricks to help children learn Braille and to engage with the process of Braille. Children dislike making mistakes. If you're using a Braille machine, your mistakes are there, written large. Children love being able to make something, unmake it if it's wrong, and make it again. And that is the important thing that Braille Bricks does. And it is making mathematics, English, Spanish, French, literacy far more accessible than it ever was before. At the moment, we've just been multiplying, dividing, including, including the uh, decimals, and decimals, which is quite challenging. Very challenging. Hundreds, tenths, units. I mainly use the bricks in Spanish. Is giving us another tool to explore learning languages. And Paige, you enjoy it, right? Muy bien, y finalmente. Gracias. It's different for anything I've done before, and especially with younger students, I think it helps them to fiddle and play. It's having something tangible that you can rearrange in so many ways. It's ridiculous that all it does for us really is give us convenient access to moving letters around, but that opens up so many doors, and that's a wonderful thing. Lego Braille Bricks make learning more fun. I gave them to my students just to see how they would get on with them. Couldn't get them off them. <laughs> we spent the whole lesson making up games and playing with them. It was just such an engaging and fun time. Spot on. Spot on. Got Spot it. Spot on. Using the Braille Bricks yesterday, I saw that moment when a child actually has properly understood something and we know what it feels like ourselves when it finally clicks into place and we say, yeah, I've got it. When you see that in a child, that is what keeps teachers going. So now let's uh, talk about the that subject, you can say, so that's Lego Braille Bricks is... Okay, and so I just stopped it there. It gives you an idea of how some of the content is spliced and diced together. 
This particular um, introduction of video that is in the segment is a little over 13 minutes long. Sometimes in the other modules that are within Lego might be 15 minutes. I think the longest one might be 30 or 35 minutes. So it really, it ranges, but it sticks together with the topic of the way that the story unfolds. So on my screen, what we're looking at is we have over uh, 13 pieces of the Lego puzzle to put together in order to understand the play-based teaching method. And because it's done sequentially, I have to go in order. I can't skip anything. And that was done intentionally just to make sure that everybody was gaining the information that you need. I learned so much about this play-based teaching method by pouring over this video content and all of the resources. I think that it's fascinating and I love how this is going to help, especially our EOTs, be able to make sure we have good information going out to our educators, our teachers on using these braille lit bricks in the classroom. I'm gonna go and enter into resources just so that you can see that sometimes there are handouts that are made. I thought that this was important of this one to have this particular course to have handouts that were available to help reinforce concepts that were talked about. Uh, there's a, a white paper that was written more about the theory of practice that came from Lego with other some Facebook resources that you can go to. So each uh, course most of the time has resources that are embedded that you can always have access to. So you may wonder what happens when you've gone through all of the uh, all of the content. So I'm going to go back to my dashboard. One of the things that I that I failed to mention that when you go in and you enter the APH Hive, you create you enroll you create a user ID and password. Because I have done that in the top left corner under an icon, um, under the branded portion at the top, it says welcome and it has my name. This is my dashboard. And right now I am currently enrolled in some courses. Um, you can see the tactile aids for math, the Lego. I'm taking the creating learning environments with items in the home and so forth. And if I scroll to the very bottom, it also shares where I'm at with my accomplishments. What have I already received my credit for? So you can keep track of those things. After viewing each video, each module, there is a portion where it's you check for your understanding and you see how you did. And it's a, maybe a true or false question or maybe just multiple choice. But nonetheless, that gives you an idea that there is a way to apply, how much you have learned, what you know and remember. Once you've gone through the, all, of the, all of the modules for however long it takes, I'm gonna show you, there's actually an assessment at the end. This one has maybe eight questions for the particular course called um, Creating Learning Environments with Items in the Home. Some courses might have only five questions in the assessment. Never, there's never more than um, 10 questions that are in there. But that gives you an idea of that checks and balance. After you have passed with 80% or accuracy or more, you also then can get to, to the follow-up activity. And so you're, that is the application process of where you can take what you have applied and or what you learned, I should say, and how you apply it. Um, and you can think about using that caseload of students that you work with. It's an activity that is just downloaded and um, you bring it up and you download the activity, you complete it, you upload what was completed and it gets submitted back to me. At that point, I look at it, I review it, um, can provide feedback, let you know. And once everything has been approved, you get to the point where you can see under my accomplishments, 
that I can view my certificate. And on uh, September 24th, I got my certificate for the magnification for students on the go. So that gives you an idea of a very, very quick run through of where we are at with the um, with what it looks like in the hive. And yes, it is all free. This does not cost money and it never ever will. This is a work in progress and it will be growing in courses um, throughout time and be filled up more right now. The pathway of into the APH hive tends to be very educator focused for those that are serving students birth through graduation. But in time, it's going to actually expand even more and provide other avenues for learning opportunities. It might be a landing spot for ex officio trustees to get more information about their role. It might even be something where you have created something in your own state, some professional development that is really good and it just needs a home. That's where the APH Hive comes into play because we can be your home, we can absorb it, and we can put it into this landing site so that everybody can have access to it. So I cannot believe I made it through a really quick run, you know, run through of everything. I'm not sure I did it any justice, but maybe gave you an exposure of what you can expect. There are like two minutes left. If you have any questions, I would love to be able to try to answer as quickly as possible. Um, my email address, if you have questions and you just want to know, is acampbell at aph.org. And oh my goodness, Leanne is in the room. Leanne just dropped it in the chat box, so thank you. You can send me, um, you can send me that information. And I would love to keep the conversation going. We're always looking for good role modeling and uh, resources. And we would love to be able to provide your content to home, but also be that go-to place where when you want to learn something more, you have a place to go. I know when I was in EOT, so often, uh, like when the Mac Connect came out, I wasn't really necessarily sure of how to help my educators use it. Because I wasn't boots on the ground with teaching students, I didn't have that day-to-day -day interaction with it. Now, you know, whether you're an educator wanting to use a new product, uh, an ex officio trustee, maybe even just exceptional children directors who want to know more about the American Printing House and what we provide, this is the place to go. So there is not a closing code yet for this session. You get it on the next round. Uh, and so at 2.15, you get that. I am delighted that you came in. I'm gonna say goodbye and welcome in our new friends that are coming into the room. <laughs> it goes by so fast. I told you it would. <laughs> Lord, Lord have mercy, it goes by fast. and. You gotta think so much. And Tracy, captioner, I so much appreciate what you're doing. I hope I'm not going too fast. I hope that the Lego video goes okay and isn't too fast. Just want you to know there's heartfelt appreciation. Aww. I'm gonna get things set up here for the next round. Welcome everyone, this is round three. Round the third, the third leg of this information fair. You've done A and B, and now you're on C. It is the same info. Yes, Nancy, it is the same info. Our goal is to take this time uh, and this day to give you the opportunity to really meet and greet lots of folks at APH. So the goal really is to get you mixed up at a real live APH, you'd be shoulder to shoulder and moving through lots of different tables and booths and sections. And we can't do that in any other way. So this is what we created instead. So this is a little bit different uh, form of conference. And it is, and this one, this information fair is might be a little bit different from what you've seen before. 
A lot of times in, in other information shares, it is more conversational. So I'll just let you know, this one is not as conversational. It's more of me providing information and um, of the, to help expose you to the APH Hive. And we're getting that link in for you. Oh, look at the captioner, beach me too. Thank you, thank you. So this one is a little bit more informational. Do my best to keep up with chats. There's so much to do and so little time. But what I wanna do is start by sharing and we will get started. I am glad that you came in and decided to buzz into APH's new e-learning service. I'm Amy Campbell and I'm super excited to be able to present to you some of the work that has gone on. So I just want you to know what is on my scarf is not a fly. So absolutely positively, no fly jokes allowed. It is a bumblebee. It's all very symbolic and very intentional. So I think that the bumblebee is an amazing creature. Did you know that long ago scientists studied their bodies and movement and determined that the bumblebee actually contradicts known law of aerodynamics? You see, aerodynamically, the bee shouldn't be able to fly. Its body is too big, its wings are too small. Yet interestingly enough, the bumblebee doesn't know, and so it just flies anyway. Did you know that a single bee will only produce about one and a half teaspoons of honey in its lifetime? Did you know that the cells shaped like hexagons form a honeycomb that can be found in a hive and is used to not only store pollen, make honey, but I love this, also serve as a nursery for baby bees. I think that bees are really, really busy creatures. And so, just like APH, uh, the APH is new, newest hub it's for educators and families to fly in, buzz in and visit, uh, to withdraw and deposit honey. And for us, it's not necessarily the honey I'm home as it is educational resources. It's educational resources is, all, are, is symbolic as our honey. Um, and as time goes on, this APH Hive is going to serve as a vital mentorship uh, location and also be able to provide that colleague collaboration that you so badly need. A year ago at annual meeting, you heard about APH Ooh. wanting to build an accessible learning management system. And I'm so proud to say that we reached this goal, even though progress was dramatically slowed because of COVID. But you know what? Just like the bumblebee taking flight, we beat the odds. Personally, we think the APH Hive is the bee's knees because it offers free professional development. It's grouped into four categories of topics that are each broken down into bite-sized pieces, which really helps accommodate busy educators like yourself. Also provides opportunities to apply everything that you've learned by submitting a follow-up activity and what's really sweet is that this completing a course gives you access to ACV REP credit. So this is the website. It's www.aphhive.org. So now it's gonna be our turn to buzz into the hive and take a tour. So I'm gonna get my screen figured out here and I'm going to Get things set up so we can buzz into the hive together. There is so much good things to share. So when you go to the hive, now, if you are a very detailed uh, person, you might be seeing that in my web address, it says a preview, aphhive.org. That is only because uh, yours is not a preview. But in order for me to demo, 
and be able to give you a good tour. I needed to just use it under the, the, the preview site because things are staged perfectly to be able to share pieces. So here we go. We come in and on the landing page, love the icon that was very um, carefully created, love it. It's the hexagon shape of a honeycomb with the B stripe symbol in the middle that's sandwiched between the words APH hive. And then buzzing around the icon are uh, the shape of some bees that are hovering. This is where you are welcomed um, up to the site and you're given access into the course catalog. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter into the course catalog. So our course catalog, currently we have four categories that are available. We have assessment, early childhood, core curriculum, and expanded core curriculum. Each of these categories is aligned with a specific icon. We're gonna go and enter in the assessment category first. So what you see here is the assessment uh, category. And currently there's only one course that's uploaded at this time. And that's just uh, for the reason that as I mentioned, COVID slowed things down a bit, but we're, pretty, we're still pretty darn proud that there's at least um, some of these offerings that are in here. So currently under assessment, we have a course called Evaluating Independent Living Skills Using the Functional Skills Assessment. This particular course is a great example of a course that is all based on an APH product. That product is the functional skills assessment. And in this particular course, you go into the product, you learn about it, you learn how to use it, and you actually hear from um, some organizations that are applying and using this product in their programs. So this is an example of what we have under assessment. In early childhood, we currently have two courses that are loaded. Um, in the early childhood, it is based upon the development um, and learning needs from children birth up to age five. So we have creating learning environments with items in the home. And this particular course is worth 1.5 ACVREB credit. And I like this course because rather than it featuring a product, it's featuring a role model educator that is sharing her craft knowledge of how she modifies and, and creates different instructional things to be used in order to um, help reinforce early literacy. Whereas the second course, which is early braille or reinforcing early braille literacy skills, this particular course is a combination. It's featuring a product, and I'm gonna go inside that. It's featuring a product of the Braille Buzz and is talking about it. And then it's another uh, piece of the instruction is one that's called Activities to Activate Early Braille Literacy Skills. And that is where um, an instructor is providing ideas of her craft knowledge of different activities that can be done with young children to reinforce those Braille uh, literacy skills. So what you see is that sometimes the courses are based on a product, sometimes it's craft knowledge, and sometimes right now it's a combination of both. So that's our early childhood. We are now gonna go into our uh, core curriculum. And in core curriculum, these are those educational priorities um, that are provided to school age students. It's those knowledge and the skills that lead to not only graduation, but successful work experiences. There's seven subcategories. We have English language arts, mathematics. We have science and health, social studies, fine arts, physical education, and career and technical education what you will see is that there are holes in this currently that there are some subcategories that don't have a course in it yet so just know that that word is yet it's all soon to be coming right now in the english language arts we have the course the lego braille bricks 
play-based teaching method, we have a really neat course um, in mathematics, Tactile Aids for Mathematics. This particular uh, course that you can view goes into some really great APH products that can be used to help our students gain access to the math curriculum. Um, those products are demoed and just really talked about of how and described how to embed with instruction. Then at the bottom, just pointing out that in physical education, we have one that is uh, called All for One and One for All, Coaching and Inclusive Team. I'm gonna take a moment and just go into there for a second so that you can view the course, so that you know that when we're talking about that, we are gonna be talking about basketball, cross country, swimming, and track. So those things make up those pieces of that particular uh, course. So I'm gonna head on back. That is our core curriculum, and now I want to take you really quickly, I want to buzz into Expanded Core. So in the Expanded Core curriculum, we have our nine subcategories. We have compensatory access, we have sensory efficiency, uh, assistive technology, orientation and mobility, independent living, social interaction, recreation and leisure, career education, and self-determination. So what you might notice here is that you're seeing a repeat. You're seeing some repeats. We see under compensatory access that there is a course called Creating Learning Environments. Remember, we saw that over in early childhood. We also have the course, the Lego Braille Bricks. We saw that over under core curriculum. And lastly, we have Reinforcing Early Braille Literacy Skills. We saw that over in early uh, childhood. This is a great example to show you how a single course can fit into multiple places. So, um, but what I do want to share is, I know this might look a little wonky, that's my word, right now, but here we have the sensory efficiency and the assistive technology back to back, and it looks a little wonky because we don't have, uh, the, the courses are not completely filled. So we have two that are repeat. It looks kind of weird to have uh, magnification for students on the go back to back. Just know, give us a little bit of time, more courses will be added and you won't see things that are back to back. But at least you see how one item can fit into more than one place. I'm gonna scroll down under to independent living and just give you that reminder, here we go. Under assessment, we saw the evaluating independent living skills and here we, we see it again. So this gives you an idea of how things are broken up in, into um, different segments and how you can access that information. What I would really like to do for you now is give an opportunity to go into an actual course. Uh, there are two courses in particular that I'm really excited about, and LEGO is one. The Tactile Aids for Math is a second favorite. But we're going to go in and I'm going to click on View Course. When we go in and we view a course, it takes us to the module page. The term module includes objectives and includes any of the instructional components of the course. And at the very end, it also includes any resources. So that just kind of gets you an idea of what that terminology is. On this module page, it does say that modules must be completed in order. You're not allowed to skip around. The only exception to that is you can always, is, is the objectives, and you can always go in and view the resources at any time. The resources are meant to help reinforce the learning that will happen throughout. So you can't skip around, um, go through it sequentially, but that is because each course really has a story to tell. And it's important to take the story and the pieces that it, that is provided. And so, this particular course, I think, is really helpful to not only educators, but also to ex officio trustees. If you were with us in August, 
we had a week long of Lego Braille Bricks uh, webinars that we had. And so there were five days. If you put them all together and watch them consecutively, it was between six and seven hours long. And what I love about this Lego course is that instead of having to watch or going to watch uh, six or seven hours of content, you can come into the APH Hive and by going through the modules that are here, it'll take you no more than four hours in order to view all of the content and do the steps of the course. So uh, I, I like that and I think that it also can be just very helpful to all of you educators. So I want to go in actually so that you can preview the uh, module that's called Introduction to Braille Bricks, Lego Bricks. And when you go in, there's always a video of content that is providing that instruction. And so I'm going to play, uh, push play so that we can get an idea of what this one is like. For blind people, Braille is literacy. The only other real option for someone who's got no sight is to listen. And by listening, you lose a lot of spelling, grammar, punctuation. I started learning Braille when I was five. It empowers me and enables me to do things that I would have never been able to do before. What we are doing here today is showing the potential of Lego Braille bricks to help children learn Braille and to engage with the process of Braille children dislike making mistakes. If you're using a braille machine, your mistakes are there written large. Children love being able to make something, unmake it if it's wrong, and make it again. And that is the important thing that Braille Bricks does. And it is making mathematics, English, Spanish, French, literacy far more accessible than it ever was before. At the moment, we've just been multiplying, dividing, including, including the uh, decimals, and decimals, which is quite challenging. Very challenging. Hundreds, tenths, units. I mainly use the bricks in Spanish. Is giving us another tool to explore learning languages. And Paige, you enjoy it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Muy bien, y finalmente, gracias. It's different from anything I've done before, and especially with younger students, I think it helps them to fiddle and play. It's having something tangible that you can rearrange in so many ways. <laughs> it's ridiculous that all it does for us really is give us convenient access to moving letters around, but that opens up so many doors, and that's a wonderful thing. Lego Braille Bricks make learning more fun. I gave them to my students just to see how they would get on with them. Couldn't get them off them. <laughs> we spent the whole lesson making up games and playing with them. It was just such an engaging and fun time. Spot on. Spot on. Got Spot it. Spot on. Using the Braille Bricks yesterday, I saw that moment when a child actually has properly understood something and we know what it feels like ourselves when it finally clicks into place and we say, yeah, I've got it. When you see that in a child, that is what keeps teachers going. So. Now let's uh, talk about the death subject, we can say. So that's Lego Braille Bricks is a play-based conceptual tool. Okay, so what you were able to see a little bit is how in video content was sliced and diced and put together and uh, of using all of that original content that we had from that Lego Braille Brick uh, webinar week. So after you watch a video segment, so this particular video that I shared here, the entire segment is a little over 13 minutes long. Sometimes modules might be, I think there's some that are as short as seven minutes. Uh, maybe in this particular Lego course, there's one that might be as much as 35 minutes long. In some of the other courses, 
there are AIRS content that might be 90 minutes long and isn't broken down into bite-sized pieces at this time. Just know that after you watch each of those segments of the, of the modules, you go in and check your understanding. So I'm gonna click on the box that says, check your understanding. And then it gives you uh, a little assessment question to see how much do you remember? What did you apply from uh, what you learned? And okay, so that gives you an idea. Once, you have had an opportunity to go through the entire course. So in Lego, there are 13 uh, pieces of the puzzle that goes together. Um, oh, and then also have the opportunity, I'm gonna highlight this for a moment under resources. Uh, this particular course, there are handouts that are available, which I thought were important to add in order to help reinforce some of the the theory and the foundational knowledge that is being ex explained about the play-based teaching method. There's also a very interesting white paper um, of research that was done by the, the LEGO Foundation, followed by other kinds of resources here about how to tap into social media with LEGO Braille Bricks. So each item is, 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 is unique. And what I'm going to do is go into my dashboard so when you go into the site, uh, the welcome site where I've showed the initial icon and the welcome message, you will create a user name um, and a password. And what that does is it creates a dashboard for you. So currently on my dashboard, these are the courses I'm enrolled in right now. Um, I'm taking the math one, I'm taking Lego, the creating learning environments, uh, the evaluating uh, independent living skills, the Braille, and I'm skipping all the way to the bottom and you can see that at the very bottom it has a, the part that says my accomplishments. And um, I am now, I have finished all the work that I need to do for magnification for students on the go. I'm gonna scroll back up and just want to let you know that after all of those pieces of the modules are completed. There is an assessment that you complete. This particular assessment that I clicked into for the creating learning environments has eight questions. Sometimes um, there might be five questions, never more than 10. They're true, false, multiple choice, and it just gives that extra reinforcement in thinking about what you have learned and taken with you. When you pass that assessment piece, the next step in the flow of working through the APH Hive is a follow-up activity. So that is the point where you're able to apply what you've learned. And so for the particular course, all for one and one for all, coaching an inclusive environment, I watched each individual uh, module video. I did my check for understanding. I then had a little quiz of maybe 10 multiple choice, true, false questions. I passed with 80% or better. Then it's time for me to do a follow-up activity. This is where you think about your caseload of students, the, you know, the, the, the who you work with, and you were applying what you learned throughout the course to that in this activity. You download the activity, you read the instructions, uh, not difficult at all, but does give you the opportunity to be creative and apply. You upload the activity, which means it comes back to me and I am able to see it and review it and be able to uh, approve that submission once that activity has been submitted to the APH Hive and it's been approved, then you get to the point where you can take a survey, tell us what you think, what was good, uh, what, what was valuable, where really important, what can we do better, and then you have access to viewing your certificate. So I've gone back down to my accomplishments under magnification for students on the go 
and here's my certificate for ACV REP credit. So I can take that with me then, and I have that under an accomplishment that I have. So this has been such a quick run through of what this is all about within the APH Hive. And we are really excited about what this is actually going to grow into be. It's in its infancy right now and always looking for ways to make it to make it better, to get improvements for it to grow. So we love your feedback on it. And I just really want to make sure to circle back and um, say that it's free and you can do it on your time. Um, you can do it in your pajamas, you can do it in your office at home, it doesn't matter. And it takes into consideration your busy schedules. 